Occult Lives, Nicholas Rorick and the Rorick Pact and the Banner of Peace. The Rorick Pact is the Treaty for the Protection of Artistic and Scientific Institutions and Historic Monuments, in other words, a treaty to protect cultural heritage and treasures in times of war and of peace. It was set up by Nicholas Rorick, a man of many talents. He was an artist, an author, an explorer, mountaineer and archaeologist, coming to all these of a spiritual commitment. One of his main excursions had been to find the mythical kingdom of Shambhala. His art has an otherworldliness about it as he paints mystical mountains and landscapes and characters of religious significance. He was born in 1874 in Russia, but he was a man of the world, reading and studying the faiths of all, constantly searching for inner knowledge with spiritual inquiry, whilst trying to find a way for everybody to live together in a peaceful existence. It was during the First World War and the Russian Revolution that Roeck saw the destruction of many sacred objects, buildings and of art. Because of this, much history was lost, cultures were losing their heritages and Roeck felt that this loss was damaging to human morale. This was on Roeck's mind for many years and in 1929 he set up the Roeck Pact International Union with the intention of establishing a group that would protect cultural values and artefacts. Rorick believed that a new movement was needed, one with a peace through culture theme. He set up the treaty having involved many countries in it, and he created a banner for the organisation known as the Banner of Peace. This is a white flag with three magenta spheres set in a circle. The spheres represent science, religion and art, the three studies that create a culture. They can also represent time, past, present and future, with the circle around them representing eternity. The treaty was signed on April 15, 1935, at the White House in Washington, United States of America, with President Franklin Roosevelt overlooking the procedures. The protection of artistic and scientific institutions and historic monuments treaty between the United States of America and the other American republics. The higher contracting parties, animated by the purpose of giving conventional form to the postulates of the resolution approved on December the 16th, 1933, by all the states represented at the 7th International Conference of American States, held at Montevideo, which recommended to the governments of America, which have not yet done so, that they sign the Roeck Pact initiated by the Roeck Museum in the United States, and which has as its object the universal adoption of a flag already designed and generally known, in order thereby to preserve in any time of danger all nationally and privately owned immovable monuments which form the cultural treasure of peoples, have resolved to conclude a treaty with that end in view, and to the effect that the treasures of culture be respected and protected in time of war and in peace, have agreed upon the following articles. Article 1. The historic monuments, museums, scientific, artistic, educational and cultural institutions should be considered as neutral and as such respected and protected by belligerents. The same respect and protection shall be due to the personnel of the institutions mentioned above. The same respect and protection shall be accorded to the historic monuments, museums, scientific, artistic, educational and cultural institutions in times of peace as well as in war. Article 2. The neutrality of and protection and respect due to the monuments and institutions mentioned in the preceding article should be recognised in the entire expanse of territories subject to the sovereignty of each of the signatory and acceding states without any discrimination as to the state allegiance of said monuments and institutions. The respective governments agree to adopt the measures of internal legislation necessary to ensure said protection and respect. Article 3. In order to identify the monuments and institutions mentioned in Article 1, use may be made of a distinctive flag, red circle with a triple red sphere in the circle on a white background, in accordance with the model attached to this treaty. Article 4. The signatory governments and those which accede to this treaty shall send to the Pan-American Union at the time of signature or accession, or at any time thereafter, 
a list of the monuments and institutions for which they desired the protection agreed to in this treaty. The Pan-American Union, when notifying the governments of signatures or accessions, shall also send the list of monuments and institutions mentioned in this article and shall inform the other governments of any changes in said list. Article 5. The monuments and institutions mentioned in Article 1 shall cease to enjoy the privileges recognised in the present treaty in case they are made use of for military purposes. Article 6. The states which do not sign the present treaty on the date it is open for signature may sign or adhere to it at any time. Article 7. The instruments of accession as well as those of ratification and denunciation of the present treaty shall be deposited with the Pan-American Union, which shall communicate notice of the act of deposit to the other signatory or acceding states. Article 8. The present treaty may be denounced at any time by, by any of the signatory or acceding states, and the denunciation should go into effect three months after notice of it has been given to the other signatory or acceding states. In witness whereof, the undersigned plenipotentiaries after having deposited their full powers found to be in due and proper form, sign this treaty on behalf of their respective governments and affix thereto their seals on the dates appearing opposite their signatures. There followed signatures from the leaders or representatives of 21 countries and more signed up later. The treaty continues to read, And whereas the said treaty has been duly ratified by the United States of America, whose instrument of ratification was deposited with the Pan-American Union on July the 13th, 1935, and whereas the said treaty has been duly ratified also by the Republic of Cuba, whose instrument of ratification was deposited with the Pan-American Union on August the 26th, 1935. Now, therefore, be it known that I, Franklin D. Roosevelt, President of the United States of America, have caused the said treaty to be made public to the end that the same and every article and clause thereof may be observed and fulfilled with good faith by the United States of America and the citizens thereof. In testimony whereof, I have caused the seal of the United States of America to be hereunto affixed. Done the city of Washington this 25th day of October in the year of our Lord 1935, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 160th. Franklin D. Roosevelt This pact is still just as relevant today in the modern world as it was in the past when the world wars raged. Their significance for cultural preservation is still important as wars rage around us and genocide is committed daily. Human life is sacred and yet wars are happening around the globe and also seem to be a threat somewhere every day. Some may say, what use is the Roic Pact? If one looks deeper into Roic's thoughts and ideas, he wanted war to end, for people to live peacefully with one another, to accept each other's cultures, each other's differences, and live together. To do that, one needs to learn about another culture's history and its ways, and that is done by studying other people's cultures and one's own culture. What Roick hoped that this treaty would also do is aid international relations. Understanding one another's culture and heritage should establish a more stable relationship. Education needs to understanding of other people's race and their ways and should lead to acceptance of one another and thus a peaceful lifestyle for one and all. As it says on the Nicholas Roick New York Museum website, there is no greater value to a nation than its culture.